In this case, we've seen the carbonate and we know it's part of the rock that's on the surface. This is the source region for the carbonate. It's not piled up dust. There's much more of it than could be explained by that. So this is indeed a place on the planet where water activity produced the carbonate and the carbonate has been preserved for perhaps billions of years. And that's exciting for those two reasons. There is carbonate, there are places where it's preserved. It's important because it tells us that the early environment on Mars had a variety of chemical environments and that variety gives life a chance to choose and to develop the path that it could evolve to. MRO has been looking at Mars in a variety of ways and as we look at the surface one of the things we're trying to understand is the composition of the surface and in particular we're trying to follow water through history that is how long was it on the planet what were its actions what were the results of water being there and we're looking for evidence that water was acting at or near the surface of Mars. So what we do is take a set of wavelengths that tell us that there's a carbonate there, for instance, and let's color all of those areas in the scene that has that particular signature. Let's, let's color that green. So we look in these images for the green areas. Those are the carbonate bearing areas. Now, we're interested in the other, what else is in the scene? The colors that are in this particular uh, uh, choice of colors for the minerals on the surface of Mars. Uh, in this image, you see that there are some yellows and there are some blues. The blues are clay-bearing minerals. Again, they're not blue to our eye if we were to look down on it. If you were to look at this part of Mars, it would look very much like any other part of Mars in the sense that it's red because it's dominated by the iron-bearing compounds, and that's the colors that our eyes are sensitive to.